What is up, Flick Connection? This is Darren, here to help you get more out of movies, covering a topic today that I have not yet covered, documentaries, and we're gonna go over, most specifically, the top 10 documentaries you can currently watch on Netflix. So these docs cover a wide range. Some are super old news, some are just a few years old, and some are fairly new or really new. Uh, hopefully you find something in here of interest. I will say I have stayed away from political and health-oriented documentaries only because those topics tend to be really, really biased uh, one way or another. So I'm really just going with uh, uh, movies that are documenting something in particular. You can say some of it's political. It's hard to keep politics out of everything, but that said, let's get on the list with number 10 blackfish now this one really made the rounds a few years back uh, and it really revolves around uh, the killer whales at SeaWorld and parks like SeaWorld uh, and not just killer whales it focuses on really just the marine life but the story really really highlights uh, is stories of killer whales uh, and basically why they should not be kept in captivity uh, I thought the documentary was really well put together as all good ones are, but it did, more importantly, it did a really good job of explaining why. It made a case, it laid it out, it made a case, and it made me not want to go to SeaWorld, number one, and I really don't think that you should, based on that, and more importantly, maybe, is I didn't feel like, uh... I didn't feel like I was being manipulated by it. Uh, it felt like there was some really sound evidence to support uh, that fact, and you just kind of have to watch it for yourself to get it. Uh, if you love animals in any kind of way, odds are you've probably seen this or you're at least familiar with it. It's going to it's going to be upsetting, but it's not so overtly horrible uh, visually that uh, you shouldn't be able to stomach it. Another one about. Uh, Things in captivity, for lack of a better word, is the wolf pack. And no, it's not about wolves in captivity. It's actually about a family of Hare Krishna boys raised in a small Manhattan apartment that essentially never get to leave. Without ruining too much, things work out okay for these boys, I mean, as best as they can. But uh, most of the footage you're seeing is home movies that they have made. So it's not like a documentary crew is in there and not intervening. So that's not the case, number one. Number two, this is a really really important movie. I've talked about it on the channel once before, but it's really important for uh, film lovers. Basically what happens with these kids is their only real outlet, they can only see out the window, you know, which is it's just heartbreaking talking about it, but their, their really only outlet is movies, and they watch a ton of movies, they watch really good movies, they have an appreciation for what's good and what's not. They really develop a palette for good movies. I was really impressed. At a young age, I was really impressed with these kids. It really made me have an appreciation for the things that I have. Uh, made me feel terrible for these kids. But there's also kind of a message of hope for uh, their future in there as well. So it's one that I know a lot of people have missed and I highly recommend it, especially if you're a movie lover. For number eight, I want to go with Man on Wire. Now this one later got adapted into a movie with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, uh, directed by Robert Zemeckis that just sort of flopped, nobody saw it, but it's about a tightrope walker who uh, did a tightrope walk across the top of the World Trade Center just as it was being completed. So that's, that's interesting enough, like that is an interesting place to start. The cover art for this one is just stunning, he's standing in the middle of the two buildings on a wire. So that's really all you need to know, but what makes this so incredible Incredible and what puts it on this list is it's a really harrowing story like it's almost like a heist movie in, in a way because they had to break in and they had to work their way up throughout the night up to the roof and they had all these riggings you can't just throw a rope across they had all this equipment to make it work and so it lays out the whole thing there's interviews with people that were with him that helped him set it up it's just really an amazing story and a fun one because uh, I'm gonna get really kind of grim with some of the recommendations as we go down this list number seven is possibly the most classic uh, one on the list and certainly one of the oldest and that's Pumping Iron with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno. This is just an incredible documentary. It's one of the few documentaries I actually own on DVD. I even have some artwork uh, that my uh, sister gave me uh, from this movie and it's just it, 
it, it's such a great story. It's almost like watching Rocky, but it is a real story. You're watching Lou Ferrigno in this, who who later became you know the Hulk on the TV show. Uh, you're watching him like work out in this just dirty gym with just uh, mix matched uh, uh, plates and stuff put together on his weights, and he's just killing it. And then you're watching Schwarzenegger, who's going for I believe his sixth Mr. Olympia title, and he's working out in Gold's gym, and everything's polished, and it's all the latest machinery, and you're just seeing the 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 duality of that, and it's really, really interesting to watch, and you, you get to see the competition unfold, and you get to see, I'm a big fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's unfortunate kind of what he did in his personal life, but was always a big fan of him, and it's really interesting to see him at that younger age, and what he was like, because he was very different, he's really... He's really an asshole in the movie, uh, which is just interesting to see. So I highly recommend that. Number six, I said I was going to get grim. This one might be the darkest one. It's called Dear Zachary. Now, this one's really low rent. It was done by one guy, a, a filmmaker, who basically was documenting a, a friendship with a friend of his, uh, Zachary is the son, the father, at the beginning of the story, you learn this in like the first 10 minutes, he is murdered. It doesn't end there. Basically what it turns into is the whole court case as uh, the guy was dating, the, the deceased was dating an older woman who was very vindictive and friends and family suspected her of the murder, yet she retained custody of Zachary. And so it's about the grandparents trying to maintain some sort of custody. It's about the legal battle. It's about the evidence. It's kind of a crime uh, story, kind of this, this heart-wrenching family story. Uh, it just really will move you. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. But like I said, it's fairly low rent. There's not really going to be production value, but the story is really, really well put together in this one. And number five, I'm going with the Netflix original Everybody's Talking About, Jim and Andy, which is basically about Jim Carrey and his role as Andy Kaufman in Man on the Moon. And what this documentary is, is showing is how he just went full method actor on this. Uh, I mean, just Daniel Day-Lewis, the shit out of it, and essentially became Andy Kaufman. Now, he, he he sort of began doing that on set, and what's interesting is he didn't tell anybody, uh, and so much so that the director had to have a talk with him and say, like, look, I don't know how to deal with this. Like, what, what are we doing? And Carrie basically said, look, I can do an impression, or I can keep doing what I'm doing. So really interesting stuff. I highly recommend checking it out, but I believe, nope, I've got one more Netflix original coming up further down the list. For another old one, The Thin Blue Line. I've recommended this on my crime movie uh, list most recently, but I gotta recommend it again because it really is well done. Uh, everyone was talking about making a murderer on Netflix when it came out, and I'm not including that because it's more of a series and we talk about movies here, but uh, I, I highly recommend The Thin Blue Line if you like crime. If, if you ever just turn on, what is it, like the, the forensic network or whatever it is that always has like those murder mystery, real life murder mysteries, First 48, all that, you got to watch this movie. This movie almost created the template for how you unfold and tell a story like that. It's a case of mistaken identity, possibly. Really, really good stuff. Classic documentary. Highly recommended. Number three, possibly my personal favorite on the list, is Exit Through the Gift Shop. And the reason it's my personal favorite is because it is directed by the British artist Banksy, the street artist Banksy. I was really into Banksy in college. If you're into art at on any level, if you're a hipster, you need to watch this. If you're not a hipster, you need to watch it. It basically sort of chronicles, uh, somewhat chronicles the rise of street art, and then halfway through the movie pivots and it focuses on a particular artist and it has a really, really interesting twist and you're left with a really, really interesting dilemma at the end of this. But the visuals are great throughout because you're looking at all this great street art. It's just, it's really cool. There's a lot of guerrilla style footage, so I highly recommend it. And no, if you know who Banksy is, you do not get to see what he looks like in this. He hides his identity very well, but that's also what's kind of cool about it. Number two, I said I'd have a Netflix original, and it's Icarus, which was uh, nominated and won Best Documentary uh, at the Academy Awards this year. It is a really incredible story that didn't start out to be what it was. It basically is about a guy who's made several documentaries, but he was going to do a bike race in Europe, uh, clean, then the next year do it again 
uh, after taking a regiment of steroids because what happens is he gets set up with this Russian uh, guy who was responsible for sort of the testing uh, labs with the Russian Olympic team in the middle of this documentary and filming it the the shit hits the fan with the Russian cheating scandal in the Olympics and then this guy this this uh, contact he has that we're meeting and starting to get to know in the documentary comes under serious fire I I don't want to say any more but it turns into this almost like political espionage type thing it's really really interesting and really just unbelievable that some of this stuff was captured on film i highly recommend watching this this doesn't have to do really at all with the current state of our political climate it really has to do with uh state sponsored cheating by russia in i can't every olympics ever i can't i mean it was it's unbelievable and number one, uh, Cartel Land. This one's going to be the harder one to watch. Uh, don't watch it if you're, you're, you're sensitive to, uh, let's just say, dramatic imagery. But it is about uh, people in Mexico fighting back, vigilantes fighting back against the cartel. And just like Icarus, it didn't start out that way. It was actually about vigilantes on the U.S. side that were fighting uh, back against people coming across the border. And throughout that process, they really started to get introduced to people on the other side of the border that were taking up arms against the cartel. Really, really ruthless stuff uh, caught on camera. Cartel Land will make you not want to consume illegal drugs again. And I'm not telling you what to do. There's a lot of drugs that are legal now in this country. You will think twice before uh, uh, paying into a system of illegal drugs after watching this movie. It's just, it's going to happen. So that's my list. Those are my recommendations. If you have additional recommendations, I keep forgetting to ask for that. Let us know in the comments below. I will read those comments, but I will keep making these as long as you keep watching them. But thanks for watching this one, and you will see me next time.